Hey everybody, Kenneth Russell here. I hope you're doing well. Today is actually my birthday, and so I wanted to share with you my birthday presents that I got this year. I'm one of the worst people to shop for, especially my wife. She, she every year for my birthday, she's like, what do I get you? I'm, and I admit that I'm impossible to shop for. So this year, I just said, why don't you just let me buy a bunch of luthier tools? She said, fine, go buy whatever you want, and that's my birthday present. So I've got some, uh, some new tools that I got here. Some of these I've had for quite a while, but I wanted to kind of give you a breakdown of guitar tools that you may want to buy to get into setting up your guitar, to repairing your guitar, to doing fret leveling, that kind of thing. So what I've got is I've got about 11 tools starting from like just the very, very, very basics that you may want to more advanced stuff that costs a lot of money. So uh, I put them in order. And so we're gonna start with like the, the essentials and then work our way up to the things that you may or may not need. But let's dig in here and check out what these guitar tools are. So what I'm gonna do is I have uh, 10 things. What I've done is I've kind of put them in order of importance, what you may wanna buy first. And this is not from like a, a luthier standpoint. Um, this is more of the hobbyist. So starting off with the first thing, a string action ruler. This allows you to, to, to judge how high up your strings are. So when you're doing a setup, you can use this to, to see how, how high your strings are. So for example, you're, if you're trying to, to do a setup on a guitar and you wanna see how high the strings are at the 17th fret. You can use this, but you can see how high your string is up. And there's a bunch of different rulers on here. I use this one the most here on the side here. This is the, the 64th uh, inch ruler here. And there's also these depth gauges here you can use. I don't use those as much, uh, but you can see how, how high you are. Also got millimeters on here as well. And then on the back, it's got uh, kind of a, a bigger ruler than this is millimeters over here. I would say if this is one thing you're ever gonna buy, um, I would buy this. You can get them on Amazon for like six bucks and you can do a lot with this. This is an extremely versatile tool to have. The next thing would be a feeler gauge. It's just like a bunch of little blades that come out and they're all at different uh, sizes, different different widths. So you, get, you got like really, really small ones to, to thicker ones. You look at your certain uh, specifications of what something needs to be. You know, when you're doing a setup, you usually want to press down here and see what, you know, the, the distance is on the first fret there. That will just kind of give you um, an idea. It'll help you to, to gauge that. And you can also use this instead of using the string action ruler for a lot of stuff too. Um, but they, you know, they both have their place. Um, this is also pretty inexpensive. You can kick, pick them up for like five bucks on Amazon. So these two for sure are definitely um, two things you're gonna want to get. These are really great for just basic setups where you're, you're, you're just looking up the specs of your guitar and seeing how high you know the, the pickups need to be from the strings or how high the strings are supposed to be off the fretboard at the 12th fret or at the 17th fret. And you can just use these, these two in particularly. Uh, if you're working on guitars at all, just go out and buy those two. The next thing is a caliper. You know, these come in really handy, like if you're replacing a nut on a guitar and you go, well, I wanna know exactly what size nut I have. You know, you can come in here and see exactly what size nut you have. Also, they come in handy when you're just seeing the distance between your strings. Um, sometimes when you're upgrading like strats, the specifications, there's different specifications depending on which guitar you have. Like American Stratocasters, the, the string spacing is different than a lot of the import Stratocasters. And so being able to measure exactly, you know, this isn't a strat, but being able to measure exactly on the um, the distance between each one of the saddles, you can come in here and, and say, okay, I know exactly what the distance is of that. Then when you go to buy replacement saddles or replacement bridge, you know exactly what it is. I got these at a pawn shop for 10 bucks and they're, they're precision calipers. They're pretty nice, it's Craftsman. I wish I had digital calipers though. You can pick up digital calipers on Amazon for like 10 bucks. Worst case scenario, just get an old ruler. Um, so maybe this doesn't have to be quite as high on the list. Um, if you you know feel comfortable just kind of measuring 
with your eyeball how, how far something is, but it's nice to have the smaller increments uh, to judge on. The next tool that I recommend getting is a set of radius gauges. Um, this is a set that I recently got uh, for my birthday and I purchased this. This has, I don't know, maybe nine different uh, radius gauges. And you know, every guitar has a, its own radius. And so it's important when you're doing setups to know what that is, uh, particularly when you're adjusting the saddles on Stratocaster and finding that, that radius. Take this and put it on your guitar and you can see what radius it is. So this one looks, I picked nine and a half. I don't know if you can see this in here, um, but there's a little bit of gap in there. And so you work your way up and you say, well, maybe that's a, a 12 radius. And you go, yeah, that actually looks more correct. If there's any rock in it, then you know, you, you're not quite right. And if there's any gap in the middle, you know, you're not quite right. So this fretboard here, Looks to me like it's probably a 12 radius. They also have different kinds. This is one I bought a couple of years ago and um, I don't really like this one for a couple of reasons. The first is if you have strings on your guitar, you can't use it. So that's kind of an important thing. Um, and now these you can, because you, you can slide these underneath the the string you can kind of you can dig it into the strings and, and tell what it is on there um these are actually really crappy ones too really wish that i would have just spent uh, like 20 bucks on them because these these have real sharp edges and i'm definitely gonna have to take some sandpaper uh i recommend going ahead and spending 18 to 20 bucks on these i tried to go cheap and got some crappy ones for uh, 11 or 12 bucks i think i spent 11 dollars on ebay for these. Read the reviews and see what people have to say. I, I, I ignored people's reviews and I wish I hadn't. Um, but they also make one too that, that looks like this. And a lot of times they'll come in in a set of four and they're notched where they've got little cutouts where the strings will be. And those are really what I actually, uh, I'll probably get a set of those too. The next thing is a notched straight edge. And basically this is just a, a ground precision um, edge here and it's notched out so you have the frets and it's got two different sides on this um, on the the top here it's it's 25 and a half this is a stratocaster um for, for stratocaster neck that's the spacing that they have for the strat and then 24 and three fourths is the les paul or more of the kind of the gibson side so what you do with this is Turn it the right way. You set it on here. This is going to be weird. I don't have the right camera angle, but you'll be able to see how straight your neck is. And what that's really good for is if you're if you're doing a setup, you want to get your neck straight, and then adjust your truss rod a little bit um, up just a hair to where there's a little bit of curve. You don't want a perfectly straight neck here. Uh, you want a little bit of curve on your your neck. And then also this is, uh, you basically have to have one of these if you're going to do any sort of fret leveling. Uh, but you can pick these up. I bought this on eBay for, I think it was $20. And I also bought one for base that was $24. But if you're going, kind of getting any further into setups um, and actually doing more work on your guitar, this is going to be needed. So everything up until this point, I've pretty much I've uh, been talking about just kind of basically for setups and then this is getting into like more of of uh, working on the guitar uh, you know that, that has fret issues or has issues that you're or you're you're really wanting to do some finish work um, all of these the stuff up here the first few things that I went through is is just kind of you know basic setup this is more of like advanced stuff and I'm not a pro or anything I'm just a hobbyist um, it can be kind of expensive. You know, when you start adding this stuff up, you end up spending, you know, a couple hundred dollars to just have basic stuff. But if you're going to work on a lot of guitars, it's worth it. Um, this is a fret rocker. Now, probably, I don't know, I, I thought about putting this before the straight edge. Um, but the reason why I didn't is because you could probably use your string action ruler as a fret rocker if you needed to in a pinch. But basically what a fret rocker does is you set it, it's got, as you can see, it's got, got a bunch of different sizes here. So uh, a bunch of different lengths of, of edges. 
And what you're gonna to wanna to do is put it on three frets and then see how level they are compared to the ones next to each other. So if I take this and I set it on here and I try to rock it, there's no rock in that. And then I'll go to the next one, no rock. Okay, there's a little bit of rock. So listen to that, I don't know if you can hear that. But I can tell now that this fret here is a little bit high. And so I'm gonna have some issues there. Keep on going down. Oh, there's some issues all around here. Okay, those are, so these two right here, I'm gonna have some issues here. I go all the way up and down on the, the, the base side, all the way up and down in the middle. On the treble side, you'll do the same thing. You go all the way up and down. And it's, it's good to just kind of take a piece of paper and just mark which uh, frets you're having problems with. And that just gives me a little frame of reference. So if everything is great and then I only have one, one thing wrong, I might just be able to file that down a little bit and get that straight and then I'm good to go. Um, but if you see you've got a ton of stuff wrong, then you're gonna have to do a full fret level. But having a fret rocker is nice. This is a thicker metal. It's probably a little bit more precision on the edge here than, than the string ruler is, which leads us to the next thing, and that is this right here. And I was really happy to get this. This is a precision sanding beam. And basically, it's just an overpriced piece of aluminum that is sanded um, to like one one thousandth or something ridiculous flatness here on the top, um, on both sides actually. And what this does is when you're doing a fret leveling, for those of you who don't know what a fret leveling is, basically, as you saw here, not all, not all the frets are level with each other. When they put the frets on here, they're all over the place. And so, I mean, there's just different heights. It's just impossible not, not, not to have them at different heights. And so you'll have to have some sort of leveling. And this is where your cheaper guitars, this is where the, the, they save money by spending less time doing stuff like this and as leveling the frets and then also what happens too is is i don't have one in front of me but a, a guitar that's been played a lot will get a little dense uh, particularly i i find them up here because you're playing um you know this one right here a lot you're playing that note this uh that d right there a lot on the second string and a lot of getting a little dent in there and so what basically you need to do is shave down all the frets and then recrown them so you you flatten them so basically there, this has some sandpaper some like sticky sandpaper and you'll put it on here and you'll just go like this all the way across and it's keeping you want to keep it flat to to the uh all the frets so that you keep your radius and basically what ends up happening is you will level all of these flat this fret guru was $60 on eBay. Um, I've heard of guys that have just gone to places and gotten some granite, like a granite scrap, because granite apparently um, has to be milled at that, basically the same specs. Um, but I thought, you know what, it's my birthday, I'm gonna go ahead and buy something. And this one is, there's actually some that are like $5 cheaper. But this looked pretty cool. So I, I kind of fell for the, hey, it looks cool type thing. So anyway, now that leads us on to this right here, which is a medium fret crowning file. This is one of those things that, that I, I really struggle with on which one to buy. Um, there's another fret uh, crowning file that has three different sizes that you can use. But from what I could tell, most guitars are gonna have medium frets and this is gonna work for it. Um, this is made in Japan, I believe. This brand is Hosco. And I haven't used this one yet, so I, I can't really attest to it yet other than what I've read online. But basically what happens is when you've got your frets leveled, they're flat on the top. Everything's flat. And so you have, you know, the the angle of your fret is is kind of coming up a little bit and then it's a sharp flat top. And you want to run this across the top of it and round off that just a little bit and once you once you just kind of keep doing it until you only have just a very 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 small spot on the top that is rounded you can see on this guitar here you can see that it's got a, like a flat top there 
And so this has had the frets leveled, but I want to crown that just a little bit more. Make that, that flat part just a little bit thinner. And that's what the this fret um, crowning file is for. Now this was $37 on eBay. So like this is one of those that if I were to buy a small, a medium, and a large, you know, I'd be spending over $100 just to get three files. So um, the medium, I think, is going to work well for me. Uh, and the next thing is uh, a fret end dressing file. This is, I think, I paid $21 on eBay for this. I'm going to hold this piece of paper underneath this so you can actually see this. It's got four different sides. The kind of the longer sides, they're a file, both of them file. And then this side is a, a flat non-file. It's just a flat piece of metal. And on this side, it's a rounded piece of, uh, it's rounded. And it also, the reason why two of the sides are not files is because they will scratch the fretboard. Now you're going to want to probably put tape across all of your, you know, the fretboard here. But basically what this is able to do is you're able to file off the edges slightly of your frets and round them off. So once you've done the fret, you crown your frets, now you can get the edges where they just feel really smooth and like butter. And so that is the, the this is particular one is the Stumac uh, fret end dressing file. For $21, that you really can't beat that for this type of, of, of uh, tool. All right, the next couple things are lower in on the, the list um, just because they're kind of expensive for what they are, but I think they might be worth it. I have not used these, but I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna try it. These are uh, fret erasers or rubber fret polishers. And basically there's three different grits. Let me take it out of the package. All right, there's three different grits. Essentially, it's just rubber with like sandpaper or sand somehow in there at a certain grit. You could use these to polish your your, your uh, frets, and they're like grits of sandpaper. So you can see 180, 400, and 1,000. But these fret erasers are, I, I don't know, I can't really recommend them or not recommend them. Um, I watched enough videos on these to go, you know what, I'm gonna give these a shot. But they're 20 bucks, and 20 bucks is kind of expensive for something you don't really know if you're gonna want or not. You may just be able to get by with having sandpaper and getting higher grit sandpaper instead of using these, but we will see, and we'll see how long they last. I mean, if they wear out after just doing a couple projects, then it's probably not worth it, but if I have these 10 years from now, then it'll be well worth it. Um, which leads us to the next thing, and this is the last thing on my list, and actually, probably could have put this down here at the beginning, um, but these are uh, fretboard guards, and you can pick these up on Amazon for pretty cheap. They're like seven bucks. I've had these a couple years ago, um, but basically, if you're if you're doing something where uh, you just want to do something quick, or maybe you want to dress some some files or get them polished up, I should say, and you know you could put these on here and work them a little bit and you don't have to worry about anything happening to your fretboard. They just kind of stand on there and they guard. Um, so, you know, whether you're using sandpaper or whatever, you could do the same type of thing on there and it's not gonna hurt your fingerboard. Um, and they work on bass, they work on guitar, and usually they come in packs of two, kind of a thicker one and then a thinner one down here for, for these guys, I guess. Anyway, um, there you have it. These are 11 tools that you may consider buying if you are getting into working on your guitar. Hopefully this was helpful to you. Hopefully that this kind of uh, puts you on the right track of what things you may or may not want to buy. Uh, I know I looked around forever for a video like this of just somebody breaking down what you may or may not want as you're, you're getting into things. And so after a bunch of research and me kind of trying to figure stuff out, this is the conclusions I've came to. Uh, you may totally disagree. And I would love to know that. I'd love to know which of these items, if you've used them in the past, uh, have been invaluable to you and which ones that you've felt like they were a waste of time. So anyway, Kenneth Russell out. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you did, please hit that thumbs up button. 
and uh, like this video, share it with your friends. And if you haven't subscribed to my YouTube channel, go ahead and subscribe. I'd really appreciate it. Thank you so much, and I'll see you in another video.